Hello everyone, this is the last lecture in the series of lectures about liver disease in children. I'm Dr. Amal al Professor of Pediatrics and Shams University. I will move in this lecture to chronic liver disease in children and its complications. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to identify the causes of hepatomegaly in children to recognize the metabolic and infiltrative causes of hepatomegaly, to be able to approach a case of hepatomegaly, to explore the complications of chronic liver disease, which are liver cirrhosis, portal hypertension, and ascites, to know the indications of liver transplantation. Palpable liver means the degree of extension of the liver below the right costal margin. In general, it is normal to palpate the liver edge 3.5 cm in neonates and 2 cm in children below the right costal margin. It is soft, smooth, and non-tender. The presence of palpable liver doesn't always indicate hepatomegaly. Sometimes there is ptosis of the liver, which is displacement of the liver downward due to deformity of the chest and hypotonia of the muscles in case of rickets. In right-sided pleural effusion or pneumothorax, the diaphragm will be pushed downward with downward displacement of the liver. Also, in case of subdiaphragmatic collection of air or fluid, the liver will be pushed downward. Other possibility of false enlargement of the liver is the presence of Riedel's loop, which is a tongue-like projection of the right lobe of the liver, giving the impression of hepatomegaly, but actually it is considered an anatomical variation. So it is more accurate to assess the size of the liver based on assessment of the liver span. The liver span is determined by measuring the distance between the upper edge determined by percussion and the lower edge determined by palpation in the right midclavicular line. The liver span increases linearly with age, body weight, and height in both genders. The normal range for liver span by percussion in units is 4.5 to 5 centimeters. At 12 years, the normal value for boys is 7 to 8 centimeters and for girls is 6.5 to 7 centimeters. Hepatomegaly in children may be due to increase in the size of hepatocytes due to inflammation in case of hepatitis, whatever the cause, viral infection, autoimmune, drug-induced, or toxins. It may be due to increase in the size of vascular space due to venous congestion, as in case of hepatic venous outflow obstruction, but Chiari syndrome, veno-occlusive disease, congestive heart failure. These two subjects were explained in the lecture of acute liver disease in children. In cholestasis, due to congenital hepatic fibrosis and Caroli's disease, there is increase in the size of biliary space leading to hepatomegaly. All the causes of cholestasis in children were explained in the lecture of cholestasis in units and children. Other possible infectious causes of hepatomegaly include biogenic liver abscess due to staph aureus infection, amoebic liver abscess occur with intermeb histolytica invasion, hydatid cyst caused by echinococcus granulosus. With any of these conditions, a non-specific complaints of fever, chills, malaise, and abdominal pain are frequent in addition to hepatomegaly. You can differentiate between them by lab studies. Liver infiltration as a cause of hepatomegaly could be benign as in case of infantile hemangiomas and hemangioendotheliomas, which are the most common liver tumors in children, or enlarged liver as a part of extramedullary hematopoiesis in case of chronic hemolytic anemia, as in sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. The liver may be also infiltrated by malignant cells, whether primary malignant liver tumors, as in hepatoplastoma or hepatocellular carcinoma, or secondary metastatic tumors, as in case of lymphomas, leukemia, histiocytosis, neuroplastoma, and Wilms tumors. 
The last mechanism by which hepatomegaly may occur in children is storage disease. At present, the most common storage disease worldwide is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NIFLD. The prevalence of NIFLD is rising rapidly because of the ongoing epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. NIFLD is not a benign condition. It represents a spectrum of disease ranging from simple steatosis or fatty liver to non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH and may progress to NIFLD-associated cirrhosis with all its complications. Other storage diseases affecting the liver are related to inborn errors of metabolism in which an enzymatic defects lead to accumulation of certain substances according to the metabolic pathway. For example, accumulation of glycogen in glycogen storage disease, accumulation of lipids in neiman pick disease and Gaucher disease, accumulation of metals as copper in Wilson's disease or iron in hemochromatosis, accumulation of glycosaminoglycans in mucopolysaccharidosis, accumulation of abnormal proteins in alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and amyloidosis. Well, this is the end of the first segment. In the next segment, you will know about glycogen storage disease, lipid storage disease, and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency.